Dus ik te samen. Um, I am Mozambique, I was born in Maputo, uh, which is the capital of Mozambique uh, in Southern Africa. Um, I am, um, um, who am I? Uh, well, I'm a teacher. <laughs> um, I'm also a student. Um, I would say I'm a designer or um, artist because I do a bit of a different kind of art. Um, but I am also, uh, or mainly, uh, linked to arts and culture uh, for having studied uh, in Mozambique uh, in a school, uh, the only school of visual arts, which is uh, located in Maputo, capital of Mozambique. Um, before I moved to, to England, uh, where I did my uh, degree uh, in arts um, and design. Uh, and then I did my um, uh, postgraduate in, in uh, education, uh, also in the UK, uh, in Huddersfield, uh, in the north of uh, England. Um, and then I went to um, Australia, uh, where I did my uh, master's degree in uh, management, uh, focusing on um, uh, institutional uh, arts institutions uh, in, uh, based on management. Uh, and now I'm doing my PhD in, in arts education in Portugal, in Port, University of Port in Portugal. Um, I'm a teacher. Um, I'm teaching at the uh, university, uh, the only university specifically for arts and culture in Mozambique. Uh, it's kind of a, um, it's, it's called uh, ESAR, which is a higher institute of arts and culture, uh, which is located in just outside Maputo city. Um, and I teach mainly uh, visual arts subjects, uh, all related to visual arts, um, uh, including things like ceramic, uh, textile, design, uh, painting, drawing, um, um, and also uh, printmaking, which is um, one fascinating um, subject that I really like uh, working on. Uh, but I, I also work in in, um, I founded a kind of a, a cultural association, which is based in Maputo, uh, which is also interesting because we uh, work with uh, uh, especially um, kids or children, young students from different schools. Um, so we do what I'm not able to do at Isaac since it's a university. Uh, so we do that here at Mono, it's called Mono, uh, Mono Cultural Association. So um, I'm kind of, um, evolved in many different things, uh, but all related to arts and culture in Mozambique. Um, yes, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a really good uh, question, um, uh, considering the fact that I'm, I'm a Mozambican and, and, and Mozambique, which is an African country uh, down south, um, uh, where uh, arts, um, it's seen, um, has um, uh, uh, in both in the political uh, way, in the sort of a community um, way, in the, even sort of a, the family uh, uh, way, uh, where um, parents uh, would uh, always consider the fact that uh, the kids, when they're not in the sort of a normal school or formal school, uh, they have to be sort of uh, occupied in some sort of sort, um, some activities. Uh, if it's not sports, uh, art has always been uh, the uh, priority or something that people prefer uh, to occupy their kids uh, with. So uh, it, it is interesting for me because I'm working at university and I'm, I'm teaching sort of young people uh, grown-up people, if you like, uh, but also working with kids, uh, those that are really at a younger age. Um, so it's uh, it's um, it's really interesting to see uh, the kind of contributions uh, that the arts uh, uh, sort of uh, bring to the society. And, and what I've just mentioned, the fact that uh, the fact that the, the parents would uh, prefer to have their kids. Uh, occupy in you know, some, some sort of organization or institution or, or some private people that they're doing arts and then they work with the kids. Uh, but it's not just to sort of kill the time, like we said in Portuguese, but 
It's mainly to actually give them um, some sort of a tools, uh, an opportunity for them to actually be, uh, um, to make a difference in a society. Uh, because when we work uh, in the field of arts, uh, the, whether it's kids or grown up people or young people, uh, you can see that, that they uh, bring something to them and to the society. And, and just this afternoon, before we uh, started this um, conversation, this, uh, uh, I was talking to my colleague, uh, and maybe I will, t I will give some details uh, when it comes to like what kind of a, uh, a good examples that I can give to uh, um, uh, when we, we talk about arts education. But it's interesting uh, talking to people that they've been your students uh, and today they're your colleague. Uh, and then when they sort of explain to you and then uh, anything that's mentioned to them, and then they will always relate to how you, the two of you have met and, and what kind of um, uh, uh, skills or learning that they gained from you uh, when they were your students. Um, and today they can tell you about what they're doing and so on. So um, it is interesting for me because I'm sort of in between of all this different layers uh, when, you, when you look at the people, what people are doing and, and what kind of institutions are also involved. Uh, and it's much easier to see the results or the contribution uh, for arts because uh, if I look back at the, the School of Visual Arts where, where everything started for me, uh, because I started there as a student uh, and then I was a teacher there when I came back from my, my training in, in, in Europe. Uh, and also in Australia, and then I uh, ended up being the uh, headmaster of that school. So I was then the director of the school. So for me, uh, that itself, it's, it shows the contribution of arts uh, to the society, because then I had to sort of give back to, to, the, to my community or society in general, of what I've been learning in all these different countries. Um, uh, through arts and culture. So, um, uh, uh, and that is um, it's something that I also see from my students or my uh, former students or my colleagues that we sort of started a journey together. Uh, and then uh, each one will sort of uh, take a different way. Uh, and it doesn't really matter which field because uh, in Mozambique, it's, um, we always say uh, uh, the it's amazing how rich this country is when it comes to art and culture. Uh, and just to um, emphasize what I've just mentioned, like that, if you look at the political aspects of uh, the, the contribution, for instance, uh, uh, in the political um, uh, uh, scene, uh, where uh, when Mozambique was uh, independent, when we gained the independence in 1975, um, but we even before that, uh, with, with the struggle against the, the, the colonialism, uh, the artists uh, in different ways, whether we were poets or painters or sculptors, uh, they were all writers, uh, they were sort of used in a good way to also uh, contribute uh, through their arts uh, to fight against the colonialism uh, and to sort of emphasize uh, how important the culture or the Mozambican culture was uh, for the Mozambicans uh, and also sort of, you know, line uh, and work alongside with the, with the politicians or, or army or, you know, other sorts of uh, um, uh, fighters against the colonialism. So you can see that, that how important the arts and culture in Mozambique has always been and has always considered as important a tool for, for the Mozambicans. And this I can add, uh, one thing is to fight against the colonialism. The other thing is to fight against the um, ethnic uh, division and uh, what, what we see in other countries where uh, a certain a group uh, in certain area of Mozambique, Mozambique it's really long. Um, um, uh, and it's a course, it's, we have a really long course. Uh, and that um, uh, brings uh, uh, one dimension which is in interesting where the, the difference uh, uh, is between or from the south uh, and the more you move to the north, 
uh, and sometimes it looks like you're in a completely different country. Uh, what you know in the language wise, in the um, uh, historical, and the, uh, the way that people address themselves, uh, the food, and everything you know becomes really different. But uh, the, the when they the, the regime soon after the independence came came on, um, that was uh, the message that was brought that you know we all Mozambican. Uh, and that was the arts and culture that was used mainly to sort of unite all the Mozambicans. And, and I can just mention that when they created the, a national dance company, for instance, which is a, a performing arts, and this national dance company uh, had the uh, task to sort of collect uh, all or the majority of type of dance and music from Mozambique, uh, no matter whether it's from the south or central or north of Mozambique, but they had to sort of be uh, the, rep the official representative of Mozambique. Uh, and so uh, doing some sort of a research and collecting all type of dance and music from, um, uh, from the, the, the country uh, as a whole, uh, and then go back in all these different provinces and present uh, you know, uh, artistically uh, themselves and sort of give back to what they collected from those uh, places. And that was another dimension, which I think for me, it's important to, to, to always mention that uh, using arts uh, to sort of unite people rather than, you know, sort of separating them, uh, which is something that you see in other places. So there's a lot of um, aspects uh, where, um, the society, especially in the Mozambican uh, society, has sort of really benefited from the way that uh, arts and culture has been used, or arts education has been used. And that's, it's also interesting, um, because we, uh, being Africans, um, and for many years during the, um, uh, the, the colonialism, um, Obviously, we were not supposed to sort of use or um, shine uh, based on what um, was the real culture of the Mozambican. So we we had to uh, follow what uh, like the Portuguese uh, colonials would say. This is what you have to do uh, in the school. So um, uh, and you have to whatever you did. Uh, uh, the methods and the tools that you would use would be the ones that someone said that this is the best tool that you have to use, but not necessarily what maybe you would consider as the best tool. So uh, uh, it's interesting to look back uh, uh, back all these years uh, and then uh, at the same time look at the situation today. Uh, and we tend to say that there's so many things that we, we should have been able to do uh, during uh, those years. Uh, and I'm talking maybe uh, uh, more than, you know, it's not that many years, I would say 40 years, 50 years. Um, and, and all these things is coming back uh, in a very interesting way because nowadays we are debating, uh, discussing issues like, uh, do we have tools uh, to, to teach, to, to provide, uh, to perform and to exhibit um, uh, and to show, sort of show off what we are able to do when it comes to arts and culture. Uh, and the tendency is to say, yeah, but we don't have a computer, we don't have, um, you know, all these sort of uh, modern um, uh, elements or uh, equipment, if you like. Uh, but at the same time, people said that, but how did we used to do things before uh, you know, we were sort of uh, colonized before we, uh, and we sort of took the root of uh, the European style. Um, and, and why aren't we able to sort of do it before um, uh, those, those years? Uh, and this is really coming back. Um, so there's a tendency, and we, we discussed this at universities, so like maybe it's about time now to say, uh, we need to, and when I talk about tools, it's not only sort of uh, uh, tools in a sense like equipment, it's also uh, human uh, resources, you know, what people are able to do 
and 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 the the, the, the big difference is, is that uh, today we sort of uh, we are um, uh, uh, depending on uh, things that has to come that you have to buy in the market or in the shop or or you have to import from Europe because you don't produce that in Mozambique or in the region. Uh, but at the same time, as we we say that um, there's so many things that we can actually do looking at uh, in our region, in our area, where we are in the province, in the community, uh, that there's things that you can actually use. And when it comes to, uh, uh, if you look at the visual arts, for instance, there's so many ways of actually producing, whether it's painting. Uh, I was talking the other day with someone about ceramic, how ceramic has been so important uh, for like especially not only in the south of Mozambique but also in the north of Mozambique, uh, and and ceramic we're talking about you know just being able to have the clay uh, and water and that's you don't buy I mean today yes you do buy but uh, there are some areas uh, in Mozambique uh, that with a really good quality clay uh, that the only thing you need is just to dig uh, someone that can help you to dig. Uh, and then the water, like the clay will also come with the water uh, and you're doing your ceramic. Uh, and it's the same with, uh, with the painting and uh, why not using um, uh, sort of a natural uh, inks, which it's, it is possible. I have that experience since I did textile design uh, and I was taught how to actually, without having to go to the shop and buy ink or, or uh, to 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 dye or, or to um, uh, paint uh, fabrics and and we can sh just go to the bush uh, and when you know uh, what kind of trees or plants or even fruits that uh, they can provide it and you do that uh, so all these uh, methods or, or didactic uh, aspects uh, where it shouldn't be one hundred percent today we can see that it's possible not to be 100% dependent on, on the Western um, uh, um, instruments or, or tools or, or, or methods. And, and we can sort of, it's possible for us to actually provide our own uh, based on what is available where you are. Uh, and I think that's a very important uh, uh, way of thinking. And if you sort of, I are able to uh, pass on this message especially to the students, those that then they will soon become teachers as well. So they will be able to sort of also experience that for themselves and be able to transmit all this knowledge and, um, and experience um, to, to, to their students. So uh, yes, we still are using sort of a Western uh, methods, uh, didactics and so on, but I think there's more and more debates on um, not completely change because I, 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 I valued so many things. I mean, I studied in New York, uh, also in Australia, and I know, uh, and that for me, it was a very good experience to actually to be able to, um, to uh, compare uh, what was done there. And they say that, okay, this is not possible to do this way in Mozambique because they don't have these tools. But at the same time, I'll say, but it is possible to sort of, uh, do something similar in a similar way and maybe have exactly the same results but not using exactly the same tools. So when I talk about tools, it's not only like, you know, you have a, 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 a paint which was, you know, produced uh, in, a, in a company, but it's possible for you to actually have paints that you could just go to the bush and, and get that. So it's a matter of how do you sort of uh, utilize the skills that you have? Uh, you obviously need to have the skills, but you also need to know what is possible to do. And, and that is the debate today. Yeah, definitely agree with you. And it, you remind me, Malangatana and the school we had with the kids from the street and they, they used sand to draw and it was just amazing. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about this artist, Malangatana. Uh, fantastic. And um, I, I was uh, lucky enough to be uh, very close to Malangatana. Uh, and he considered me as his son. 
um, and for me he's, uh, he was my, my father um, uh, in, in many ways um, because I, I, I was able to learn so much from Langatana uh, from exactly what Thierry is saying about being able to look around and say that okay let's teach these kids from uh, what is available uh, so that you know tomorrow if they want to do it they don't need to wait for anyone they can just go there and just to use the sand uh, <clears throat> they used to call that uh, Shkolinya, um, uh, 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 I forgot the name of, of, of it but that was really interesting because the kids were like from the community uh, and being able to actually do things, really interesting uh, things, looking at him as a, someone that was well-known artist, not only in Mozambique, but uh, worldwide. Um, uh, so, uh, but that was one thing from Malangatana. But the other thing, which I always mention, I, I'm, I'm, uh, again, I'm, I was very happy to, to be close to him, was when he was able to, uh, to build this uh, or create this uh, uh, association in Matalan. Matalan, it's, it's a, a small village where he was actually born uh, in Marapen, which is about 40, 45 kilometers uh, from, from Maputo city. Um, and he just decided to, to, to build this center, uh, Matalan Cultural Center. Amazing, it's really amazing place um, with them. Um, uh, like you know, in within nowhere, you know, in the middle of, uh, I wouldn't say bush, but in the middle of, like you don't see anything else there. It's just this beautiful amphitheater because it was combining. And this is another thing that is good to mention, like when you talk about Mozambique or arts in Mozambique, is the combination of all these different. Uh, disciplines uh, like performing arts, visual arts, cinema, uh, poetry, and, and so on, and theater. Um, and he was able to think uh, and say that, okay, I have this area here in Matalana, uh, what can I do with it? And then he built a sort of a, a accommodation space, and then an amphitheater, and then they had some uh, workshops there uh, that people would just go there and produce their arts. Uh, and then there's a place where you can just sit there and eat while you are uh, either observing other people working or, the, you know, the, uh, the, you as an artist as well, but you need to, to, to eat uh, sometime. Um, so it's a place where he sort of built and you go there and you feel peace, you feel, you get inspired, uh, not only by his art, uh, but uh, just by looking surrounding in that area and and it was so interesting because he was able to connect not only the, with the community itself but with the schools that were surrounding the, the center i worked with uh, two schools uh, very close to matavana cultural center there that we managed to we used to uh, take kids from the schools take them to center to the matavana cultural center and then they would learn different types of arts, they will paint, they will draw, they will sing, they will play. And then when it comes to instruments, for instance, and those instruments were actually made by uh, things that you would find in Matala. You didn't need to go to the city and buy whatever. Like uh, there's this instrument, beautiful instrument. Um, a tindila, for instance, it's, uh, it's one of the most uh, exotic uh, instruments and most famous instruments that we have in Mozambique that produce an amazing sound. Uh, and that is, it's made by things that you find in the bush. Uh, there's absolutely nothing that you buy there. Uh, and to get these kids to actually produce uh, or construct all these instruments uh, and then play them themselves. And that was so amazing. And, and, and it's, has to be someone like Malangatana, you know, to think that way, because uh, all else, elsewhere people would say, this is, this is too big dream, because, you know, you don't have water here, you don't have electricity, uh, you don't have access, you need, uh, like, you know, good streets um, and roads uh, so that people can drive here, 
There was nothing like that. But people were going there to that center. Uh, and he had ambassadors, he had uh, presidents, he had kings uh, of you know many places going to Matalana. So he's a, a sort of um, a person that today we, uh, uh, myself, for instance, and I know there's so many people that they they inspired by Malangatana, not only by uh, with his artwork, but the 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 the, the thinking, you know the. The vision that he had, um, and that they, and and that's what we need. So um, he is just he was an amazing person in all aspects, uh, and connected to, I would say, more or less all uh, cultural institutions that you have in Mozambique, and and started from the National Art Museum that we have, uh, the National School of Visual Arts. Uh, he was involved with that and the National Dance Company, he was involved with that. So it was a person uh, that he was a culture himself and, and it was good the way that they sort of uses him in a good way. Well, thank you, Victor. I think it was really important to talk about him in this context of this MOOC. And what you said is just amazing. Well, my next question was about examples, cases that you know and you want to tell us about. There's, um, there's, there's quite a, a, a few good examples that I can, I can share with you, Teresa, but there's, um, maybe I can just focus on one uh, related to uh, human uh, or uh, related to a sort of a building a society through uh, believing or uh, beliefs or 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 through um, uh, courage um, or being able to uh, evaluate and judge um, a person or a child uh, like from a really younger age uh, and say that. Um, um, I think we can do something special with these kids. Um, it's um, a young young guy today is uh, uh, above 30, 30 something, uh, almost 40. Um, and I was uh, working in in a, a kind of a center uh, outside Maputo Center, uh, which was founded by the uh, Danish organization ADPP. Uh, they were working with especially kids that they were orphans or they didn't have where to live, uh, sort of street kids. Um, and he was there as well. And I, I was, my, my task was to go there and teach uh, these kids um, different types of art. Um, uh, and then I decided to teach them uh, batik, which is something that I love doing. Uh, batik, it's a um, a technique uh, where you sort of, you need to have a cloth, a piece of cloth, a uh, fabric, um, you need to have a uh, wax uh, that you melt, uh, and then you sort of apply in, in the piece of fabric, uh, and then you dye the fabric. So where you have applied wax, uh, then the fabric, the, the ink will not um, sort of apply, and it will so sort of, uh, isolate you know that area and then the other will, will, will get painted or printed uh, and so we did uh, lots of batiks and i was like my goodness i said to the teacher there that um how, how, how old is this uh, young man and they said i think he was six or seven uh, and then i said but uh, when he finished uh, the, the standard here because that was i think it was up to standards uh, five or six I think. Um, and then I said, is it possible that you can bring this young man to the School of Visual Arts where I'm teaching? Uh, and I was talking to this pedagogical director of that school. Uh, um, and then he looked at me like, um, because I was really young as myself, I was very young. And they look at me like, um, you know, who's this young guy that is talking about <laughs> you know, with me like this way? Um, but I didn't think that he, um, he took that seriously. Uh, but I was serious about it because I could see that that young guy, he was very talented. Um, 
And then so I went back. Two years later, exactly two years later, I had forgotten about it. Um, and then somebody, and then I was then a pedagogical director of School of Visual Arts. And then uh, someone uh, comes and says, oh, is there someone who wants to talk to you? Uh, okay, uh, just let me in. Um, and then he comes in and he says, oh, I am from this ADPP uh, school and um, uh, I met you two years ago. You went there and you worked with our kids. Um, I said, oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, and then I said, do you remember that uh, those young, uh, talented guys that we said that maybe uh, we could bring him here if when he finished that standard so he can continue studying? I said, yes, of course. Uh, and he said, he's here now. So he's finished that standard and he's ready to come and study here at, at School of Visual Arts. And I was like, I almost fainted. I was like, I couldn't believe it. Um, why am I telling this story? Is that this young man, uh, that was a really sort of a young, young, that you, but you could see that he's very talented. He's today teaching and he's leading one of the departments at university. Uh, it's called Isaac. Um, he was then trained at School of Visual Arts and then was trained at Isaac. He became a teacher, he's today a teacher. Uh, he's one of the most um, not promising anymore because he's already there. I mean, he's part of the sort of established artists that we have in Mozambique. Uh, and he go places. I was uh, this last weekend in a place called Bilen, which is close uh, uh, to, to Maputo. Um, and people were talking about him and his art. And they were showing me him. Uh, they were showing me the kind of arts that he was doing there. Um, so, why am I talking about him is that uh, through us, um, the, because of that, we have today a person with a very significant uh, presence in the society for himself, for his family, for the community where he's based, uh, and for the institutions that he was, you know, he was part of them, and including this uh, high. Uh, Institute of Arts and Culture, which is based in Batolo, uh, called Isaac. So this is art. This is, um, you know, what the transformation uh, from art, because he was just a street kid. Uh, and if it wasn't because of the art uh, or somebody that could see that he's a very talented uh, young man um, and all the school, the ADPP, that they considered to follow uh, after those workshops that we, we were giving to the kids there, uh, and, and then they sort of gave them, you know, other opportunities for them to continue working in this uh, arts, uh, the field of arts and culture. And he is the man. So uh, I think that tells it all. Um, and for me, it's one of the, the story that I will always tell people uh, to show but the impact of uh, arts education that we have, especially here in Mozambique. I would say um, mainly uh, three main things uh, for, for me. One is that um, we have to, because I, I include myself in, in this group, um, we have to more and more uh, think of uh, local solutions. We are able to do things without having to wait or having to travel that far. That is very much possible because I have been through many different experiences and I'm still uh, working on many different aspects on that and I know it is possible and we are able to do beautiful and very uh, important things for our community. So uh, to think locally uh, and to uh, we talk a lot about resources and 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 uh, look at what we have because we do have resources uh, wherever we are. Two is uh, I think it's very important to um, consider people, especially uh, those that um, have not been uh, in any university, they have not been in uh, traveling in different parts of the world, but 
it's possible to sort of uh, 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 learn a lot from these people because they have lots of knowledge. Uh, so um, uh, to, to consider, to look at these people as resources, as good resources for us when it comes to human resources, it's very important. And, and uh, I really, really uh, advise us, everyone, um, that we have to consider to these people because they are really, really, there's so much that they can do. What happens um, is that uh, because they don't have certificates, they don't have, uh, they never been to any university, uh, then they're not uh, allowed to teach, um, uh, not even a primary school, because it's like, you know, the teacher, you know, they have not been trained. But most of us that we are today teachers, obviously, yes, we did go to this old, this, uh, the university, and we learned uh, different methodologies and different tools, uh, we gained skills and, and knowledge and so on. But uh, what I'm saying is that these people are also equally able to teach us, to teach other people because they have knowledge. Uh, and third, third and lastly is, um, um, I think it's very important uh, to uh, never think that you are able to do things yourself or by yourself. Um, and I am very fond of collaboration. I'm very fond of partnership. Um, and uh, there's a tendency of people to think that if I, if I work, if, if I'm um, um, uh, work with people from other um, communities or other provinces or other countries, uh, maybe these people, will, uh, the only thing that they will do is to steal something that I have. Uh, no, I don't think people will steal what you have. But people will learn from what you have, and you will also learn from what these people have. So it's very important that we more and more work collectively and work in a collaboration way, because uh, in that way, we're able to sort of give and take. We, there's always something that you can learn from the other person, uh, and that person will for sure learn something from you. So this is my uh, sort of three main uh, recommendations uh, based on what I see uh, that is making things more and more difficult for us to develop.